<risa> ok. <risa> ok, so vamos a ir uh, con YouTube. Y voy a decir ahorita que mi padre está enojado conmigo porque dice que con él mira estos, yo hablo puro inglés, o so voy a Spanglish, so voy a ir de los dos porque dice que necesito hablar los dos. Pero ahorita te voy a enseñar, or I'm going to show you guys, uh, my slide deck. So if you guys have been with me, you know, uh, this one is a little bit of a story. This is uh, the one that we use uh, with our students. So this is called Frankentech. Uh, we try to create um, Apple creations. Apple is one of the most powerful devices, but we can't afford them. So our mindset was looking through Chrome eyes and using a little bit of Microsoft too is a broken tooth is that we need to speak all languages and use all products. So this is kind of like when you see this, it's about like a little bit about who we are. Uh, the reason it's green is because all our colors together, all our colors together were a mixture. And these little dots that you see are the representations of the people who started this. And then the lines is the first class is how many kids started this whole thing. And this is kind of a gift from them. Now, a key right here is the link for my whole resource. I'm giving it to you because I'm gonna go and I'm gonna try to give you everything that I have in this time I have with you. So bit.ly, YouTube for all. And I wanna show you how I use this and why I think this is a powerful, powerful device. All right, so right now, let me just make sure you understand why I think YouTube is powerful. Um, I know right now uh, Star Wars just happened. The fourth be with you was a big day, but I grew up a lot watching both. So I just want to tell you, if you want to fight about Star Wars and Star Trek, they're both powerful, but in different ways. Star Trek is the exploration. You're going to go out and find new things and do that. YouTube fits that for me. YouTube is not perfect. You can find good videos and you can find bad videos. Kids can go on different paths. So what I want to show you is how can we make YouTube work for us because YouTube is a powerful educational tool. So what I want to start with you right now is when we go to YouTube, where do we find the things we want? So the first idea I want you to know is this button right here. We need to use this button. We need to use this plus button to create playlists. So anytime you go to a video, if you click on the plus button, you can create a playlist so you can find it. Now, this is the one. This is my old teacher account. It's a personal account before I even knew about Google. I went through and I was looking at all these playlists and I had to coach volleyball one year. I do not know anything about volleyball. So I went and broke everything down by what do I need to teach? And then I went and found YouTube videos that helped me figure out how I can do this in a better way. Because YouTube has a video for everything. My mom even has a playlist for able to have all these different recipes she wants to try out. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this live. I want you to know this slide deck is for you. But I want to show you how we can do this on YouTube. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go to YouTube to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to go to another window and here I am in YouTube. If you don't know how to get to YouTube, if you open up another tab and in this tab, you just go through and type YouTube, you will get there. So right now I'm going to click in here and you would type in YouTube and YouTube.com is where I'm getting all this from. No, no paid sites, nothing. I'm using YouTube. Now, when I go to YouTube, I, here I am. Now, here's the thing. Because this is my kids use my iPad, I don't watch Fortnite videos, but they have all this stuff here of uh, custom Nerf builds. All this stuff shows up because this is the top part is your history. All the things that ever gets looked for is here. But I want to find videos that are powerful. Today, I'm going to show you one of my favorite videos, and it's called Lost Generation. Just to show you how I would do this, I would just type in Lost Generation. And when I hit this, it'll go to the videos. Now, when you type in Lost Generation, you'll go through every video there is a title that way. The one I want to use is the one that was made by Jonathan Reed. It has 7 point, uh, 17 million views and it was made 12 years ago. And he says, I guess I should finally get around putting something here. I was surprised to receive so much attention. This is a kid who created this video and I want to show you how I would do this. Now, I'm going to go to the video. So I've looked for the video. I went to YouTube. I looked for what I was looking for, and then I went to the video. So when I click on the video, I'm going to pause it because I don't want you guys to watch it yet. Okay, now when you watch it, here's the plus. Let me make sure you guys can see it. So right here is the plus symbol that I was talking about. Right below me here is the plus symbol. When you click on the plus symbol, it allows you to look. So right now you see these are all the, the playlists that I have. So I have hitting drills. I have track and field. I have shooting machine, which is a basketball. It's not like gun gun. Right now I have the media specialist stuff. I have Adobe After Effects. I have my Google education. All these are playlists. Now right now I'm going to pretend I don't have this video, but I do. 
But right now, I'm going to go down here to where it says create a new playlist. So when I hit create a new playlist, I can now title a new playlist. And this one, I'm going to type it. Um, I'm going to be George's faves. So George's favorites. I'm going to make sure how do I want this playlist to be viewed. So if you click on me, you'll be able to find it if I make it public. I can make it unlisted, which is only the people that I share it with. So it's like view only to the people that I uh, share the link to. Or I can make it private and you can never find this playlist because it's only for me. Right now, I'm going to make this public because I might want to share this to kids or I might want to share it to you. So when I click on public, I click create. Now you'll notice when I go back to click on this video again, You'll notice now this video is clicked on George's favorites. Now I have a video that I can go and find that I've put together. So here's what happens sometimes to you guys when you guys look at YouTube. You find a video that one time you found that secret video that teaches everything you wanted to use and then you can never find it again because YouTube is growing exponentially. It's like the universe. It grows and grows and you can't find that video anymore. So when you find that perfect video that fits what you want to teach, you need to make sure you put it where you can always draw from it, go through it. To give you an idea, just right now, I'm going to tell you when a teacher came up to me and said, hey, I don't know how to teach this thing. I'm having this hard time. I went to my playlist and I shared that playlist and all those videos came to that person. I have a teacher that's retiring this year and her gift for the new teacher coming in, she's giving her her playlist that she's gone through and built for years and years and years because she understands the power of knowing where you're pulling videos from. So right now, if you don't know where this is at, know right now making a playlist will help you find what you need when you need it. Now, now that I've made a playlist, I want to make sure you guys see this. I've made a playlist. Where do I find it? Right now, I want you to know, and again, this is all in my instructions. I want to click on what I call the three tortillas. You click on this and it opens up. Now, YouTube is supposed to keep you drawn in. So they're always trying to give you videos you can predict, like you want to see this one next and you want to see this one next. Well, you can get lost and it's not very helpful for when you want to find something. So I'm going to tell you, I always go, when I open it up, I go to home. So I always start at home base. And then here you'll notice you have something called your library. When you click on your library, Right now, you have all the videos in your history. So you can see my son's been watching a lot of these videos. But when I go down here, these are the playlists. So histories first, then playlists, the things I've created. So right now, you'll notice I have a new video here called George's Favorites. Right now, it's in here. I have one called Online Kindergarten. And I can go down to see, show you guys show more. So right now, here are all the videos that I have. Show more. So I want to know right now all these videos that I had. I had to do a TK once. So right now, I had to help a teacher with TK. She was looking for TK songs. I click on View Full Playlist. And now, here are. We have the videos. Now, sometimes the videos are deleted because they're pulled away. You can't do anything about that. But if you want Slippery Fish, I Am Pizza, Pete the Cat, uh, we have one about shapes, we have Giant Ball, Paw Patrol, all these videos that she wanted, I was able to create a playlist. Now, in my instructions, I first ask you to create a playlist and just have it. The second thing I'm going to ask you, and just so you know, I'm going to come back to this button, is I want to make sure you know this button has power. But I want you to know, I know I'm talking fast, but I want you to know the slide deck I gave you has everything. So let me swipe back to my slide deck. So down here, I asked you first to create a playlist. This is the video showing me how I did those steps with a TED Talk. So the first thing I wanted you to think about is collect video libraries. So a playlist is you collecting a video library that works for you. So you notice one of mine was uh, Adobe After Effects. I had no idea what Adobe After Effects was, so I made a playlist of videos that I could follow. I didn't subscribe to people because when you subscribe to people, sometimes some of the stuff they give you is trash. I want to select what I want. I'm like a guy at the farmer's market picking out the best ingredients, best tomatoes, best cucumbers, and from that, I'm making what I want to eat. The second thing with a playlist is that playlists are shareable. I can give you a playlist and you can have it just by sharing the link. So right now, this is how easy you do this. Remember that arrow I showed you? I'm going to go back and do this. When you go, you can do all these social media ones, which is fun. But right now, I want to just share the link. I want to give you the link and give you my playlist. So right now, I'm just going to swipe back again to the other screen so you can see what I look like at YouTube. So right now, back on YouTube, let's say you guys wanted this TK songs, which some of you may not want. But right now, right here, where this little arrow is, this little arrow that's there, 
when I click on it, it's gonna open up that menu that I showed you the picture of. And all I have to do is copy this right now. I'm gonna click copy. And then I can actually drop this in our chat. So right now, if I go uh, in the chat, I could drop that and give that all to you, which I, doesn't seem like I can do right now. But right now, I could drop it in the chat and then you guys would have that playlist just like that, bam, you have that playlist and it's yours. And then right now we're, we have separate playlists. It's like making a copy and giving it to you. Now, back, back to my instructions. I want you to know creating a playlist is part one. Make sure you know, I'm not asking you to find this perfect YouTube video, find the one that fits for you. Now, here's the second thing I have for you with YouTube. Because it's so big, search with keywords. So right now, I'm going to tell you, when I do a YouTube search or a Google search, my YouTube searches are super long. So right now, if you guys look up here, if you guys look up what, what I'm writing, if you guys look, science fair projects, once I type that, you'll notice it just tries to predict. But you'll notice I'm starting to go for high school, and I was working with a school in Canada. I say high school for, and then you notice in Canada, California, I was able to select perfectly what they needed for what they were working on. So when you do a YouTube search, you should be writing the longest sentence possible. So it's like asking someone to make you the perfect taco. Do you want onions? Do you want what type of meat? What salsa do you want? Do you want no salsa? You got to be as specific as possible as you write out. So if you just write out science projects, well, you're going to get every science project in the world. It may not fit. So if you're doing it for fourth grade or third grade or for kids in Mexico or for kids in Peru, make sure you're writing it as specific as possible and you'll get what you need. Once you find that specific video that you want, add it to a playlist. Make sure you don't just try to remember where you found it or look through your history because if your kids get a hold of your iPad, you're never going to find that video again because it's going to be at the bottom of all those videos they watch. So right now, no, when you do a keyword search, look for the longest form of the word that you can find. And it will look like a run on sentence, but you'll get so much better results. So right now, the first one, make a playlist. The second one, search with keywords. Now, once you have that, again, I'm going to the Star Trek whole concept make a playlist find the best videos you want specific specify how you want them make it into a uh, you search for keywords i want you to think how can we deliver those videos besides just sending them to youtube because again if you send the kids to youtube they're two clicks away from finding something you don't want them to watch so right now i want you to know how do we give the kids that where you can actually make the experience for them the tool that I use is a very special tool. It's called Google Slides. So if you were with me my first session, I talked about Google Slides and I showed a little bit of this, but know right now Google Slides is my holodeck. If you know Star Trek, that's where you build an experience. So Google Slides is so powerful for me because what it allows me to do is deliver the content. I don't have to send them the YouTube video. I can send it through them in a slide. The second thing I can do is I can edit the video. I can make the video start and stop where I want it. And then we can give it to the kids is what's called published form, which means it looks like a web page. So let me do those actually live for you. So now what I'm going to do, same thing I did before, is I'm going to go back and forth from this. So let me get out of my, my presentation here so you guys can see this. I'm actually going to open up a Google slide and do this from scratch, and I'm just going to follow my directions. So I'm going to open up another window, and then up here, up here where you have the tab, I'm going to do it. I can go to google.com, click on the waffle, and then go to slides. But an easier way is just to type in slides.new. And that means it opens up a Google slide from scratch. So here I am from a scratch Google slide. Here it is, and now I have something I can work with. The first thing I'm asking you guys to do is get rid of this. This is not a PowerPoint. So get rid of themes. So click on X, get rid of it. And then now you have a big screen to work with. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to know if you click on this, if you're with me before, you know if you click on this, all the options to edit come up, all these options to type. We don't want to do that. We want to delete these so we have a blank space. The quickest way to do this is if you click on something to edit, the edit options show up. If you click on the gray, everything goes away and the big four shows up. Background, layout, theme, and transition. So if you go to layout, click on the one that's called blank to give you a blank piece of paper. Okay. In my instructions, I told you get rid of themes, give yourself the biggest frame, the layout, 
and now we can work with this. Now I'm gonna tell you, if you're gonna show a video, don't show it on white. Your eyes are gonna be twitching back and forth trying to figure out which one to look at. So the next thing we're gonna do, is says we went layout to delete the backspace. We wanna go background, background to make it black. Now look at your eyes for a second. You've been watching the screen. Your eyes will relax the moment it goes black. The moment it goes black, your eyes will relax and you're gonna be able to watch the video in, in, in the best way. So right now we went black. Now again, just so you know, I'm gonna go back and forth and I know I'm super excited, I'm going fast, but I want you guys to know, you guys have this video, you can go back and watch it, but I want you to know on slide 12, I just covered those steps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue now to the next slide. So I'm gonna go down to slide 13, and now I'm gonna go to the next thing. We chose a blank layout, we set the background to black. So just know all I'm doing right now is I'm following the instructions so you guys can see it live so you know what it looks like. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert this video. And then we're going to come up with this magic uh, option right here. So I'm going to go back to my slide. I'm continuing to follow my steps for you. And right now, I'm going to insert a video in here. The easiest way to insert a video inside a slide is go insert. And when you go insert, the option right here is right there. It's called video. Now, when you click on it, you know right now, you can actually search YouTube right here. If you have the URL for the video, you can do that. Or if you have from your Google Drive, you can also do that. The video that I want to share with you guys is called Lost Generation. So I'm going to type this in. I hit enter. And now it's looking for that video inside of YouTube. I want this one, the one that I was read to you that I want. I click on it. It turns blue. And I clicked on select. And it drops the YouTube video into my slide. Now, the first thing I always do, just because I want it to be perfect, I go up into the left to a corner. And then I pull opposite. If I pull from the opposite side, it keeps the dimensions good. It doesn't squeeze it. Now, if you click and hold shift down, if I click and hold shift, it doesn't let me go up and down. Notice right now it keeps me level. It keeps me centered. What I want to do is I want to go um, to where it gets that red line. I actually did. I didn't hold shift down. It actually let me move up a little bit. I want the cross. Do you guys see the cross? That means it's centered perfectly in the middle of the page and I let go. So right now, I inserted a video from YouTube by going up to Insert. And in Insert, I just dropped and searched for my video in there. Now, I'm telling you, if you know what your playlist is, you would just copy the link and drop it in here. Or if you know what it's called, I would recommend you doing your video searches through your playlist instead of you just randomly searching for a video this way because it's harder to watch this way. But that's how quickly you can drop it in. All right, let's see what the next step is. So right now, I'm going back up here. The next step is once you've done this, and this is a video here showing you what we're doing right now, but I'm doing it live for you because I want you guys to see. Now the steps here, let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see this. The steps here that we're gonna do next is that we're gonna go through and we want to make sure the video looks good. So we've opened up a slide. We wanna make sure we insert the video by searching for lost generation. And now we're gonna mess with the options for autoplay. Okay, so we're gonna start the video at zero and we're gonna end the video at 50. So right now, if you look at this option that popped up in the side that I'm gonna cover, start plus autoplay, okay? So right now, I wanna make sure I autoplay the video and I start it wherever I want it. So if you ever wanna start a video, let's say the beginning of the video is like five minutes of something you don't wanna see, but at the 504 moment, that's where you want the video to start. This is where you start the video exactly where you want it. You edit the film to give the kids the content. So instead of showing them stuff that doesn't matter, get to what you want them to see. And if there's something you don't want them to see, please stop it before it gets to that point and the kids never see that. I'm gonna tell you one of the things I do is I stop every YouTube video one second before it ends so that the ads don't pop up. So right now, no, when I finish this, it's gonna stop at 1.44 because I don't want the ads to pop up. And then right now, the end, I control the end, so I do what's called the cliffhanger. I'll let the kids go, I want to know more. So let's do that live. So right now, I'm going to do that live in this. I'm going to go back to the slide that I've been working on so you guys can see how I'm doing this. And right now, I'm going to come over here where the options are. We want it to be at zero, and we want to stop it at 50. So all I do here is take away the time. So right now, where it says one, I'm going to go zero. And when it says 45... I'm gonna change it to 50. So right now, 50. Oh, I lost the, the little, 
So 50, okay, start at zero and end at 50. Now, one of the things that happens here, it, enter doesn't work in here. So just click off and now it's locked. It's gonna start at zero and end at 50. And then I'm gonna hit autoplay. And now you'll notice something here when I click present. So when I click present at the top, the video will play automatically without me doing anything. And you'll notice down here, there's a little white line that tells the video where to stop. Okay, now I'm not gonna show it to you yet. I want to make sure I'm building up what I'm doing. But right now, no, I've just followed the steps that I've showed you. We're starting the video at zero and we're ending the video at 50 because that's where I want it to be. So right now we're using Google Slides to deliver the YouTube video how I want it. Okay. Now, again, make sure you know all I'm doing is following my steps. Here's the next step. If you guys know what Control C does, it copies. Control V pastes. And control D is the one that a kid told me, Mr. B, you're too slow. Control D duplicates whatever you're working on. So instead of starting a control C and control V, control D, boom, you're done. Now, what we want to do now on the second video is we want to start it at 47 seconds. Remember, we ended it at 50, but I'm going to 47. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to build anticipation. I want them to be like, oh, I know what's going to happen because I heard this part before, but I want them to kind of like remember a little bit so I can suck them in. Then remember, we're stopping the video at 144 so the ads never play. So if you ever want to give a video where you want want the kids to see the ads, the pop-ups at the end, stop it one second before. Now let's go back to my slide so I can get this, this done quickly. The quickest way to do it is to make sure you click on the slide and I'm going to go right here, control D. And then now what it's going to do, it's going to duplicate the next slide. So now you'll notice right now, this is a copy of this. And if I click on the second slide and I click on the video here, you'll notice right now it has the same time. It says stop at 50 and start at, oh, at zero. But this time I want to change it up. So this time I want to go one, remember one, and then we want to go 144 because we don't want to show the ads, 144, and we want to start it at 47. So we're going to go 47, and then remember, don't hit enter, click off, and then it does it for you. So it's going to start at 47 and end at 144, and this has already been clicked, but you want it autoplay when presenting. So right now, I'm going to hit present, and now the video will start in the middle. And all of this will come true unless we choose to reverse it. Okay. So like, again, all we did right now is we use these two film, these two videos, these two slides to edit the film so I can have it where it is. And then what I can do now is I can add an essential question. I can add something in between. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the end product. So right now, here is the video right now. Here's the example. So we have one video, then I have an essential question. Is this true? And what does this mean? So let me show you how we show this to the students. I am part of a lost generation and I refuse to believe that I can change the world. I realize this may be a shock, but happiness comes from within is a lie and money will make me happy. So in 30 years, I will tell my children they are not the most important thing in my life. My employer will know that I have my priorities straight because work is more important than family. I tell you this, once upon a time, families stayed together. But this will not be true in my era. This is a quick fix society. Experts tell me 30 years from now, I will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of my divorce. I do not concede that I will live in a country of my own making. In the future, environmental destruction will be the norm. No longer can it be said that my peers and I care about this earth. It will be evident that my generation is apathetic and lethargic. It is foolish to presume that there is hope. And all of this will come true unless we change. So, you look, I stopped it. I stopped it and I know right now this is a very depressing video because you're only seeing part of it. By stopping it, I control where this video is going to go. Now, remember, in between, I have the questions. So right now, if I go through the next one, essential question, is this true? Is what this kid's saying to you, is it true? Is this going to happen? Is this really what's going to be our future? Because right now, there's a line that I want you to think about. What does this mean? What does unless we choose to reverse it mean? It's the last phrase of it. So watch the video in its entirety now. You saw it from one way where the really depressing. I know that. But watch how this kid does this poem. And all of this will come true unless we choose to reverse it. There is hope. It is foolish to presume that my generation is apathetic and lethargic. It will be evident that my peers and I care about this earth. No longer can it be said that environmental destruction will be the norm. 
In the future, I will live in a country of my own making. I do not concede that 30 years from now, I will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of my divorce. Experts tell me this is a quick fix society, but this will not be true in my era. Family stayed together once upon a time. I tell you this, family is more important than work. I have my priorities straight because my employer will know that they are not the most important thing in my life. So in 30 years, I will tell my children, money will make me happy is a lie, and true happiness comes from within. I realize this may be a shock, but I can change the world, and I refuse to believe that I am part of a lost generation. Now, remember, the ads didn't pop up because they stopped it. Now, in the beginning, when you saw the video in one way, the video is very depressing. The video, like right now, uh, this is the perspective of what the world is right now, and the noticias and everything with the COVID and all that stuff that's going on. It all looks really, really bad. And for a kid to be able to do a poem, remember, this is a video that was created by a young 12-year-old, I think it was at the time, and it was created in 2007 with all the facts in this world, but he flipped it by being able to switch it. So right now, I want to make sure you see, all I did is I just broke it up. So this video started from zero, ended at 147. This is the essential questions I put in between, and then this is being able to do this way where we're able to go through that. All right, let me make sure I push through so we can get to the rest of the stuff that I want to share with you. Now, just to show you what's happening here, this is that same video I did before where I showed you the Star Trek. But this time over here, if I click on it, you'll notice that this is a video that starts at 44 after the conductor starts talking and I'm ending at 205. I'm not going to play it the whole way through, but I'm going to click autoplay when presenting. So right now I'm going to go to present and look what happens. So now I could have a picture on the screen and on the side, I can have the music playing from it. Now, for those of you that are Star Trek fans, I know this isn't the right one. I just was looking for something to use here where I can do it. So right now you have music on the side. How do I have music on a slide? I have a music because I'm using the right now. I'm using the slide deck to go. Now, let me show you one right here. This is me as a Google slide YouTube. The final frontier. These are so right now, I recorded myself on using something like Screencastify. I was watching a YouTube video with the audio, and then here I am being able to insert something from my drive inside the video. So let me get out of here to show you what this looks like. So right now here, just to show you how quickly we can do this, all you have to do to make it look like it's audios in the video is you got to move the video to the side. So right now I'm using the arrows on my keyboard to move the video. And when I get to the edge of the video, let me move over so you guys can see this. When you get to the edge of the video, what you have to do here is you've got to make it touch the side and make it red. And when you make it red, that means it's attached. And when I hit present, that means the video will play automatically. You guys don't see the video, but you know it's right here. And now I have my voice inside YouTube, the video. The final frontier. These are the voyages of EdTech Team Canada in its five day mission. So just know right now, that's how you can do this stuff. All right, in the time that I have left with you, I wanted to make sure leverage YouTube, do YouTube, but let me just show you right now the one that my wife gave me. So right now I want you to know, if you've never known about this, Edpuzzle is my friend now. I didn't know this even existed, but what you can do with YouTube videos is you can make any video into a lesson and you can choose the video and then make it your magic touch, your magic touch. So if you never use Edpuzzle, I want you to show you, this is my wife's class. Right now with the YouTube video, you can check if the videos are if the kids are watching the videos you assign. Now we blocked out the names of the students, but here you can see she created the videos into a quiz. You can see the date they did it and whether they turned it on time or not. And then these are all the places you can pull videos from to use in Edpuzzle. So you see YouTube, Khan Academy, National Geographic, TED Talks. Now this is where she blew my mind. And this video, I'm just gonna tell you, I know I'm going fast, but right now, what is Edpuzzle? There's a video for you to watch. How do you use it? There's a video for you to watch. But let me tell you why she blew my mind when she told me this. This kid got a grade of 86 out of 100. They watch 100% of the video, and they answered 19 of the 22 questions correct. And here's my favorite one. They watched it for 17 minutes. This is really important because if you look at the time of the video, the video is 15 minutes long. So if this means if they watched it only for five minutes, that means the kid cheated. So make sure you know this is a way to check their understanding. Now she created these into quizzes. You can see the ones the kids got wrong, the ones they got right. And then this one's important. They got this question right, but they went back and watched that section twice. 
So when you create a question, it creates it into a section. So if a kid is not sure about the answer, they can go back and rewatch the section before they answer the, that part of the video. Now, what does Edpuzzle look like? Here's a video that shows it to you. So right now I was doing this for Canada. I went through Edpuzzle and I went through and I clicked on edit to make it my own so that I can look at the questions. And so I looked at question number one. Who are the first Europeans to reach what is today known as Canada? So I saw, oh, that's a great question, number one. That one right now plays right here. So that one right now is playing right here. I can see it. So right now that question is going to pop up when the video gets to here. So right now I was trying to check to see what it is. I pull it to look at it. And then right now they have to watch the video. And then it's going to pop up right here with the question. So the video is playing. The YouTube video is playing that you've assigned. And you created it into a quiz. And here's the first quiz. Right now, who were the first Europeans to reach what today's known as Canada? Now, you see the back end, so you have to select which question is correct. The kids never get to see that. And then it goes to the next question. So right now, it's playing through to get to the next question, and then right now, you go. Now, this was created by another teacher, and I'm just using it. I can use it, but you can create it from scratch for yourself. Right now, you can see what the answers are, and the questions you have, you have multiple choice, which grades it for you automatically. You can add what's called open-ended. That means they can uh, answer, like they can write. Or what you can do instead of giving them a question, you can insert your voice, repeating what the, the point was that you just saw. So right now, you don't have to just make it all that way. Now, just so you guys can see it, so you guys don't think I'm making this up, let me go to Edpuzzle. So let me go out here. Let me jump into my personal account. Out of my personal account, let me go to Edpuzzle so you guys can see this. So I'm going to go to edpuzzle.com. And then I'm going to go through the process of signing in. So right now I'm already logged in. So you notice I'm in here. This is my account. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can pick videos. Now let's do one real quick together. I'm going to click and go curriculum. Um, I want to know for, let's do middle school. I want to pick middle school. Let's look for videos for middle school. Let's look at world languages. So I'm going to click on world language. I want to teach my kids French. Let's see what lessons there are for French. Uh, let's look for grammar. Okay. And then again, I'm not going to know what they're saying. Oh, they have them by units. Whoever made it this made it a whole unit thing. And I can click, what's unit 11? Now I was like, learn French. They created all these videos you can go. Actually, I'm not going to know what any of these are, so I'm just going to click on one. So I'm going to click on it, and it would help if I learned French. But right now, here's the video. I can look right now. They just have the video assigned. So this person, what they did is they just assigned the video. But here's the thing I love. Down here, people went through and used their video, and you can see, which is this person, same person's videoing over and over. Now, here's what this person did. They inserted their videos to check the kids how much of it they're watching. So instead of assigning a YouTube video without them knowing, are they looking at it, this person assigned it so that when they assign it, they can see if they watched 100% of the video. Let me go to something that actually has questions in it because that's what I wanted to look at you. I know right now, let's do... Um, Let's do, what is board foot spark test? For, no, let's do this one. Torque versus a horsepower. There's 12 questions in here. I'm going to click on this. And so now I'm going to go, okay, there's questions down here. Everything, that's a, everything that has a bubble means it's a question. Here are all the different other people that have used it. So right now this person used the 12 questions and added a voiceover. This one has 16 questions. So I like Jonathan Rice's one. Let me click on his. It's the same video, but remixed by that person. I want to see the questions, so I click on edit. If I click on copy, it's just the exact same copy, but I want to see. Uh, we're talking about um, what is blah, 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 and I can see through the courses here what they're talking about during the course of the video. So right now, no, you can assign this. Now, the one thing you guys have to do if you're using Edpuzzle is that you guys have to make sure you're signed into your account and then you can use it just like Google Classroom, and you can assign it, or you can make it into a link. But again, look at all the channels here, and also you can just search. So let's search right now. I want to learn more about, um, let's do uh, water cycles. I type in water cycles, I hit search, and then it gives me, here are the videos from Edpuzzle that people have already created. Here's a YouTube video that I can use for this. Um, let's go see more. Let's see how many other videos I can find. So right now, this is all from YouTube. I'm pulling all this stuff in, and I can use it. So these are all videos that talk about that. So it uses that. So along with your playlist, along with your delivery tool, Edpuzzle is one of those things that you can go through and just be able to create videos for yourself for your kids. Now, again, you can decide if you want to use someone else's or create your own, but Edpuzzle does that for you. And again, all those things, if you're wondering, I wanna know more about Edpuzzle, I didn't know about that. On slide 24, 
what is ed puzzle right here you can actually just watch this and it goes through the overview how do i use it there's some great examples in here but basically i'm telling you it, you can use it and the thing about it it's free for the paid version you can keep your videos private for the free version everything's out shareable which i think if you're making stuff for kids everyone should be shareable so this is something that i love to use and my teachers are using it oh the one thing i didn't show you here is the school, this is not my school, but I worked with the school showing this, and then all of a sudden there was nobody using it. Now there's 11 teachers using this at this school, and the thing that's awesome is that you can look at uh, all the people that are using it, you can watch their videos, and you can actually collaborate this way. In a paid version, you can keep these all private. In the public version, everything is shareable. We all share the same kitchen. So just know right now, this is one thing that I don't think is a negative. I think it's a positive. So right now, no. And then the one thing, um, usually I see it a lot in math. In math, you'll see that a lot of people will create their own videos. So just know right now, oh, this is someone, so this is in that area. If I go to curriculum, in curriculum, let's go high school. You see this a lot in high school. In high school math, you'll see, let's do algebra one. Let's do polynomials. Let's do whatever this is. And then what you'll notice here, basics. You'll notice right now, these, these are people's videos. These are people, this is someone that's teaching it. See, like they're writing. You can record your video in your Google Drive and you can use your own video as something that you can be able to teach from. So no, you're not just pulling from YouTube. It's for you to be able to pull anything you want through that. So Edpuzzle is my last thing on that to know. I wanna make sure you guys understand what I just did. Start with playlists. Find the videos on YouTube that work for you. Then make sure you share, you do the searches by what defines the easiest way for you to find. Make it as specific as possible. Make sure it's like you're ordering from a restaurant. Don't just pick what's on the menu. Pick what you want. I want th this and I want this and I want this. Once you have that, I'm going to give you different delivery tools. Google Slides, you can edit the film inside a Google Slide where it starts and it stops. The last thing I gave you here, is, oh, and they can also add audio. So remember by clicking in on the side, you can have audio as you're talking about the slide and you can have things in there. And the last thing I gave you was Ed Puzzle. Ed Puzzle is the one thing that you can use that will deliver it for you and make it all like a quiz. So make sure you can see it. If you make it multiple choice, it will grade it for you. If you do it open-ended or open questions, you have to be the one that looks at it. And if you just want your voice to stop every once in a while, you can also do that. Remember, one of the three options was multiple choice, open-ended, and then voiceover. If you click voiceover, all you can do is have your voice repeating what you wanted them to do. So make sure you know Edpuzzle is one of those tools. That's why I have myself in this picture. My wife is a math teacher, and she just blew my mind when she showed this to me and she uses it almost every day. So just know this is a great tool you might have known, but you need it. So right now on the bottom of this, if you go through them, at the end I have how I did some of the stuff with my faces. I'm running out of time, but I wanna make sure that stuff on the end of it is just ways that you can do things. This is something that's there. And if you don't have it, if they haven't shared it in a while, know right now this whole thing on the slide one, this is where you have, where is this, this whole slide deck, oops, go back to slide one. This whole slide deck is under that YouTube for all. So bit.ly, YouTube for all, this is all you need. I don't know if you've ever heard of Edpuzzle, if not, but hopefully if you haven't, your mind is blown the way I was. If you have used it, you should be sharing that to everyone. Everyone should know that. YouTube, leveraging YouTube, make sure you know it's something that I think is powerful if we use it in a device that we're able to share with you. All right, Dominique, do I do is there any questions? I kind of No, that was great, George. Thank you so much. And thanks for sharing the extra resources there at the end as well. Um, I I had fun looking through your presentation and remembering some of those fun little tricks you shared with us. Yes, and um, yeah. Did you see any questions, Fede? No, no. Well, yeah, th there was one question which we answered. Uh about what the hollow deck is, so oh. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I gotta confess, I, I'm not a I'm not a Star Trek fan, so I had to actually Google what it is in Spanish, and it's called an holo cubierta. So hey, we all learned something here. <laughs> oh man, I went I went super geeky. I was like, uh, I went and I took them the wrong way. I should have stuck with Star Wars, but the hollow deck works better when you're doing that because it actually makes more sense in, in the Star Trek realm, but. ¿Cómo se, ¿Cómo se dice? What's holodeck? Holocubierta. Holocubierta. 
<laughs> okay. I next time I'll do that. So right now I messed up, so I feel like a pickle. I feel like I just didn't didn't do it right. So I apologize <laughs> for that. I should now. My you know who's going to tell me about this? My dad's going to come in and say, he he watches these. He loves these. He watches all your guys' shows, and he's like loving it because he's opening his eyes. He didn't know that you know. He sees me doing stuff a lot in the states, but to be able to know in Latin America, there's what you guys are doing is amazing. So thank you from from my father, from me, and I'm sure from all the teachers that are in this. You guys are doing amazing work, and the fact you keep doing this week after week after week <laughs> is amazing. No, well, thank, thank you so much yeah. for being with us, George. It's been great having you here, and, and yeah, yeah, we'll keep going. So if you if you still have stuff to share, we'll be happy to invite you again and again and again. <laughs> yeah. It's it always goes back. If it's if it's first teachers, yes, every time. So just I'm gonna keep sending me invites, and I'll keep accepting them. Awesome. <laughs> pues muchísimas gracias, George. Okay. All right, thank you. I know thank you have to run. So <laughs> have a good day. Happy Friday. Okay. Happy Friday. <laughs> yeah, bye bye. Pues sí, estaba muy bien, no Fede. Sí, la verdad es que eh, eh, muy, o sea, eh, varias cosas que de pronto uno a veces no está pensando y que, que por ejemplo, lo de las, las eh, bibliotecas, pues las libraries de YouTube, personalmente yo casi no lo uso. Eh, por lo general creo siempre es listas de reproducción, es donde voy guardando y, y a, ahorita dije, ve, qué buena idea esa, ¿no? De una vez fui a revisar eso en mi YouTube <ríe> al mismo momento. Sí, no, la verdad es muy buena idea y además como recordarnos que hay mil recursos que ya existen. Yo sé, este, porque he estado en capacitaciones esta semana y esas semanas, pues, donde me siento que muchos están súper abrumados diciendo, pues, yo no tengo tiempo ni el conocimiento de, de hacer otro video más. Sí, y, exacto. Eh, yo creo que eso es algo que, que decía George que es importante que, eh, pues, si, si nos tomamos el tiempo de, podemos o tomarnos el tiempo de crear nuestros propios videos, que de pronto va a ser más tiempo, <risa> o, o tomarnos también el tiempo de escoger los videos eh, indicados. Eh, y habrá momentos, yo, yo no sé, yo personalmente a veces uso otros videos, a veces creo los míos. Uno también conoce a quién se lo va a dar y, y uno toma esas decisiones sobre la marcha. Sí, de hecho, Fede, me, como alguien me preguntó algo esta semana y te quería hacer la pregunta, estaba trabajando con unos maestros en México, la Ciudad de México, y uno me preguntó, oye, pero si no quiero compartir mis videos en YouTube, como que le daba pena algo así, ¿cómo, cómo has ah, logrado como eso? Eh, eh, bueno, eh, pues primero uno, procurar decir, convencerlos que es mejor compartirlos. <risa> pero, pero si no, yo, yo lo, que, lo que he sugerido en esos casos es que los lo suban a Google Drive eh, y los comparten solo con los estudiantes de ellos. Eh, y, 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 por ejemplo, se puede hacer lo que hacía ahorita George en, en Google Slides, porque en Google Slides se puede traer videos de Google Drive. Eh, entonces, sería esa opción, se me ocurre de pronto como para, para, para ese... Uh -huh. Como para, un intermedio, ¿no? O como mientras, o algo así. Exacto, como que los hago, los tengo aquí, pero de todas maneras no me voy tan, eh, no, no me comprometo a, con mucho, porque ay, esto es parte del proceso. Yo también recuerdo los primeros videos que monté a YouTube, uno, uno le da pena <ríe> hasta que ya uno dice, ay, ya vamos, no hay problema. <ríe> sí, porque la verdad todos empezamos de lo mismo, así que es parte de, pero también les dije, tal vez ponnos como unlisted, Ah, también, exacto. Por ahí, como no tiene que ser público para todos, y como poco a poco, ¿no? Es paso a paso. Exacto, ¿no? Y de pronto ese list es una buena idea porque solo se lo envían a quien ellos quieren eh, que tenga acceso eh, y luego eh, de pronto, o sea, ahí lo que pasa es que si alguien comparte el enlace con otra persona, pues lo van a ver las otras. Pero puede ser una buena manera de pronto recibir un buen comentario de alguien que uno no esperaba y diga, ah, mira, mis cosas sí se, se valoran. <risa> Sí, así es. Aquí pues es un proceso. Veo que ya, ya llegó Dan, entonces no sé si quieres, lo vamos invitando, Dominique. Sí, claro. Hi, Dan, how are you doing? Hi, Dan. I'm good. I'm trying to fix my background. <laughs> I'm trying to get a good background. So, um, no. No worries. Fede, did you see that question that just came through in the chat? Yeah, let's see. 
Um, Ana Luisa is asking. Ah, okay, removing videos from their um, from um, playlists. Uh huh. Yeah. Eh. Let's let's let Dan fix his background. We'll pop you back in in a minute, then, Dan. Right? Do you think that's okay? <laughs> um. No, I'm almost there. I got it. Ah, okay. I got it. Okay. Cool. Cool. Eh, 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 so, eh, Ana Luisa, yo creo que ahorita terminamos con Dan y revisamos el, el playlist. Oh, nice. <laughs> I had to have it. Sorry. Someone said something about Star Wars Day, so uh, I, have to, uh, I have to go there. Oh, nice. Awesome. Hi, How Dan. are we doing? Oh, we're doing great. We're, we're we're doing really good. We're finishing what week five of uh, weekly webinars. So. Yeah, it's day twenty five today. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I think today will be it'll be one hundred twenty six webinars or something like that. Or oh my gosh! <laughs> Staring at a lot of screens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, Dan, before we start, we're gonna play a short video. And sure. then we'll we'll go ahead and, and start with you. All right. That sounds great. 